Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Northwest Baseball Report recap show. This is for the weekend of March 26th through the 28th. I'll actually include the 29th because a doubleheader for the NWAC was actually pushed back a day because of weather. But guys, for those of you here, I just want to say thank you for listening. Whether your reason is because you just would rather listen to a podcast or you're like me and you're just too lazy to read articles and you just want to listen to something, thank you for t- tuning in, for taking the time to listen to this podcast it really is a lot of fun for me i do have more fun when i have guests on but at the same time i just like talking baseball it's awesome so guys let's jump into the northwest baseball recap and we'll start with the great northwest athletic conference where northwest nazarene just continues to do what they've been doing all season long they go in and they sweep saint martin's in a four game set and they have just been tearing it up. They are 11 and 1 in conference, 17 and 3 overall. I know they are ranked in the top 25. I'm not sure how high they are now. Haven't checked the, lo- the latest rankings, but they are just impressively out there winning games, doing what they do week in and week out. Uh, really, just their pitching this weekend it was just unbelievable. You know, all four starters for Northwest Nazarene earned wins. Um, you know, you had guys, I mean, they only give one earned run between the four starters. That's that's just impressive. That's domination. That's what you have to do uh, to be a nationally ranked team. So uh, once again, Northwest Nazarene, 11-1 and one in conference. They are clearly the in the lead right now. Western Oregon is in second at 5-3 and three in conference, 6-4 and four overall. So uh, Northwest Nazarene holding on pretty good. Uh, Speaking of Western Oregon, they actually faced off against Montana State Billings this weekend, and they did get blown out by eight, have an 18-run blowout in one of the games, but the other three games, Western Oregon uh, took care of business. They won three out of four, won the series, and like I mentioned just a minute ago, they're in second place uh, in the conference with Montana State, you know, falling down to fourth with their weekend. Uh, Central Washington, uh, with their bye week, they're three and five in conference, five and seven overall. And St. Martin's one and seven in conference and four and ten overall. So, guys, let's jump into the Northwest Conference. And man, they've had a busy, busy few weeks. A lot of great matchups coming. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun to see. First matchup of the weekend: Willamette versus Puget Sound. And this was a pretty good series according to the the stats and looking at the scores they actually split the series so both teams came in with with two uh two wins and you know you always want to try and win a series but if you're not going to win a series splitting a series is better than losing a series so uh that was a, a good outcome i guess for for really both teams you know that puts willamette at six and six overall in the conference and for puget sound uh they are actually sitting at four and six so you know, Puget Sound's down the rankings, but at the same time, things are pretty close in the in the NWC, so they're pretty close. A good series can actually boost them up a little bit. Willamette right now is technically fourth uh, because of their conference record, but we still got a lot of baseball to be played. Uh, also in the Northwest Conference, Pacific took on Lewis and Clark, and Pacific would come out on Saturday. They had a triple header. They were trying to kind of get in before the weather hit on Sunday. And in that triple header, they scored 37 runs. And jumping into the next day, they did not slow down. They added another 14 runs. So they were just on fire. Tyler Quinn for Pacific had seven hits, eight runs, four RBIs. So Great weekend for Pacific. They actually jumped into first place in the Northwest Conference, edging out Whitman at the moment. Whitman had the the bye week, so they were off. Also in the NWC, George Fox took on Pacific Lutheran, and Pacific Lutheran would would sweep the doubleheader on Saturday, but George Fox would would bounce back and win on Sunday uh, before the final game of the series actually was rained out. So what was supposed to be a four-game series turned into a three-game series. Uh, Pacific Lutheran did win the series two games to one, but you know it's good for George Fox to get into the win column on the weekend, uh, especially before the weather hit. So you know, another close weekend matchup. Good to see uh, teams out there playing. Last series that was played for Northwest Conference, uh, Linfield versus Whitworth, and both teams honestly would need this series. They would need this to kind of catapult them back into the standings, give them a chance 
uh, for the rest of the season. And Whitworth, Whitworth is a team that would come out and take care of business. They would win three out of four. And, you know, that gives them a little bit of a jump back up into the standings. In fact, it jumps them uh, into fifth place conference uh, wins wise. So, you know, it was a big weekend for them. Lenfield drops to two and eight in the conference. Uh, they're at the bottom of, of the standings. But once again, there's still a lot of baseball to be played. And if they rattle off a, a couple series wins, they have a chance to move back up in the standings. So still a lot of baseball to be played. You know, no one's out of it, but we definitely can see a few teams, Pacific and Whitman, starting to pull away at the top a little bit uh, with Pacific Lutheran, Willamette, uh, Whitworth, right there in, in the mix of things as well. Uh, George Fox, Lewis, and Clark, they're not out of it by any means as well. So, guys, also going on right now, we had some games in the Cascade Collegiate Conference. We had Corbin versus Oregon Tech, and this one would go back and forth and actually would end up in a 2-2 series split. Uh, Zach Simon from Corbin would improve his pitching record to 4-2 and two as he went seven innings, scattering six and not giving up a run. Dalton Daly uh, for Oregon Tech would collect seven hits, helping Oregon Tech's offense uh, really get going over the weekend. And that would help for Oregon Tech there, actually at 9-7 and seven in the conference, 14-6 and six overall. Corbin is 8-8, eight and eight, so they're just right there behind Oregon Tech uh, in the standings, 9-19 and 19 overall. Also in the Cascade Collegiate Conference, we have Eastern Oregon versus LC State. And LC State would just run the table with this one. Not really as much of a matchup as you would like to see uh, from or Eastern Oregon. Once again, this is Eastern Oregon's first year back as a program. So there's going to be some bumps in the road. But for LC State, they would score 10 plus runs in every game this weekend. Uh, they actually had some guys throwing shutouts. They just, it was a pretty dominating weekend for them. And that puts LC State at 15 and 1 overall in the, or in the conference, 22 and 2 overall. Uh, Eastern Oregon drops to three and thirteen in the conference and three and seventeen overall. Uh, the team with the bye week this week was College of Idaho. I believe they actually played uh, some some games against a um, non league opponent just to get some games in. Uh, they're five and eleven in conference, thirteen and eighteen overall. So guys, those are the three that I've normally been covering the last few weeks, but I am excited because I get to add in the NWAC. Although the, there wasn't a full slate of games, we did get a number of games from the South region. And, man, I am excited to see NWAC playing, which means that all levels of college baseball here in the Northwest are officially up and running. But the first game in the South region I want to talk about is our first series is South Southwestern Oregon Community College SWAC versus Umpqua. And Umpqua would actually throw a no-hitter uh, to kind of start the season, not a bad start to the season. Uh, it would be with Austin Anderson and Preston Johnson. They would combine for the no-hitter. But coming back, Swalk would actually have get their first win of the season uh, by an outstanding pitching performance by Micah Del Rio. He would go eight innings, striking out 10, only allowing one hit. So between these two teams, they had two games uh, that were just outstanding from the starting pitchers, uh, from the whole pitching staff. So fun to see the season start that way with them. Uh, another series that happened this weekend, Shemekita versus Clackamas. And Shemekita would get off hot in early on Friday, scoring 21 runs in the first two games. Now, there would be some weather postponement. I would push it back, uh, but they're – it wouldn't slow them down. They'd come back and score. They scored, I believe, 18 more runs to finish the sweep. So they actually had the four-game sweep to start the season. Uh, Noah Horez, he actually tallied seven hits. And so just a great all start for the season for Schmeckita in a very tough south region. I mean, let's be honest. You've got Lane and Len Benton and Mount Hood who have been uh, pretty solid contenders each year for the NWAC tournament. Umqua is brand new, but they are going to be solid Swalk is looking good. Shemekita is looking good. So really, it's going to be a, a tough race down there in the south to see kind of how things play out. And speaking of Lane and Len Benton, they actually would face off this weekend. And Len Benton would start off this, the year by going three and four or three and one against Lane, winning three games. Uh, had some pretty good starters going out there. I know Eric Hill and, and Rhett Larson would actually combine for a shutout victory. But Lane would get the first win, their first win of the season with a shutout of their own with Matt Dallas and Oliver Massey combining for a shutout. So uh, once again, some more pitching, you know, 
highlights coming out this weekend for the NWAC. It's great to see. Now, that's one of the things that uh, with the wood bats, you now pitchers do have a, a little bit of advantage, but once the hitters get going, um, they can hit the ball pretty good. There was a matchup in the East region this weekend, uh, Spokane versus Big Ben. Now, the first two games of this series were actually, I believe, uh, not official. They were more practice uh, doubleheader. They were supposed to play a second doubleheader, but due to high winds, that actually got postponed to a later date. But in the opening series, they did play. Whether it counts or not, it's still baseball. I don't care. Uh, Spokane would actually win the first two games. Cameron List would have a you know a short but solid outing, going four innings, only allowing two hits, no runs. Uh, Jordan Summers would go two for four uh, with three runs scored and two RBIs in the first game. So some highlights out of the East. Now things actually kick up for the NWAC big time this week as I think pretty much every team is active this week. And I'm going to pull up the schedule really quickly. Uh, it gets definitely a lot more dense in terms of number of games uh, starting this week. And I know that uh, Laura Columbia, which is obviously the team closest to me, they will actually be hosting Green River on Saturday. So it's fun to see some local games coming in. And yeah, this weekend, starting on Thursday, we have Clackamas and Mount Hood, Spokane and Columbia Basin. We'll start things off. Uh, Friday, we got Umpqua and Lane, Lynn Benton and Southwest Oregon Community Co Southwestern Oregon Community College. Um, so they'll jump in. Saturday, like I said, Green River at Col Lower Columbia, Pierce at Tacoma, Centralia at Grays Harbor, uh, Skagit at Edmonds, Olympic at Everett. So we got a lot more games going on. It's going to be a full slate. I love to see it uh, all the way through Sunday. Just lots of baseball. Going to be fun. Um, and then it looks like the rest of the teams that haven't started yet will actually start. Um, then following week, about April 8th, that Thursday, we'll see a few more teams getting their first games of the year and, and so on. So I'm excited for excited for what's going on. I'm actually really excited because there's a very good chance I'll get to cover um, a game this weekend, or at least a doubleheader this weekend. And then next week, I'm actually going to do a short one-day road trip to cover uh, some baseball out of my local area just to get some more photos, get some more uh, stuff going on, and then, you know, obviously more games down the road. But I'm excited for the chance to get out there and cover some baseball and just do what things have been doing. It's been, it's been great to see. Uh, but, guys, that is a recap. I do want to say one thing to the sponsors that I have, the Portland – baseball club and the rep, the Pacific Northwest hat company. Uh, they've been awesome with me. They've been so supportive and, you know, just coming alongside, it means a lot. And if there are any other businesses out there um, and you want to be a supporter of what's happening with Northwest baseball report, please feel free to contact me. Let me know, just get things going and uh, you know, help out the cause to promote the, the colleges, the high schools, the travel ball teams that don't get the re coverage that they need and deserve so guys with that thank you so much for listening uh until next week when i can recap some more baseball in fact there's gonna be a ton of baseball to recap next weekend um I, this is nice it's nice having baseball to recap in fact major league baseball will actually be starting up in what two days so we got lots of baseball happening it's great to see guys i'm josh this is northwest baseball report talk to you later